Welcome to readtheticket.com. Today we're going to investigate the amount of energy built up in a sideways pattern, or what Richard Wyckoff would call a, a cause, a period of accumulation, relative to the energy that's released. Like in physics, a base pattern builds up energy built by the, the battle of bulls and bears that, have, that is eventually won by one side and where the energy is released. For example, this image shows the battle of the bulls and bears and they're fighting against each other and the, there's a compression of activity, you know, the energy is build, building up and eventually one side gives way and the spring is released. So here we have a cause, then we get a sign of strength, we get a, um, a strength, we get a last point of supply here, and we carry on until we get some strength over here, the last point of supply here, and we just seem to be beginning to see some strength here at the moment on Apple, we haven't got a last point of supply yet, so bear that in mind. Cause, sign of strength outside the pattern, the last point of supply, the continuation of the markup, another cause, some strength out of the area, last point of supply, and the markup continues, and we're just building up another pattern here. Now, it has to be said, we um, even though we have a bit of strength in here, we don't have a last point of supply, which means it is on the table, this price action can fall all the way back down. So we don't know if the uh, this strength is going to hold until it's tested, and that's what we call a last point of supply, which is like a minor little sell-off. Um, yeah. Okay, now to measure the amount of energy coiled up in a consolidation or a cause, to gauge the possible effect that's a worth a trade, Richard Wyckoff will say, well, you know, I want a base pattern that's going to actually generate at least three to one uh, chance of profit. He's going to put a dollar down. He wants to try and have a good chance of making three dollars. He used what he called the Wyckoff count guide. And to use the Wyckoff count guide, he would use a pointed figure chart. This pointed figure chart is um, some, some facts about it. We have a box size of one, just down in the corner here. A box size of one and a reversal of two. What a box size of one means is it's been it's one dollar, and a reversal of two means the uh, price has to go or the price has to go down from the existing point two dollars before the a red bar can draw. And on the upside, the price has to move up from the red two dollars before the blue bar can draw to draw. So it's a point reversal of two points. At the top here, you'll notice we've got a, um, a count of 10 to 10. It can be 5 to 5. What that does is basically counting how many bar or columns there are in the chart. Because we are doing a count guide, and this is just a quick way to eyeball the amount of columns in the chart. So what Richard Wyckoff would do, he would do a count guide. Now, one of the critical rules in doing a count guide on the accumulation side is that before you do a count, you must ha obviously have a base, but you must have a strength. This is a SOS strength. The last point of supply. You can get strength within the consolidation here. I've got a sign of strength here, but the uh, it doesn't break out. Um, so we won't use that one. We want to use a situation where we've got a breakout, a sign of strength, and a last point of supply comes back here. And you don't start drawing Wyckoff count guides when you don't, unless, until you have a sign of strength or last point of supply because quite frankly you have no idea whether they're going to break up or break down. You need evidence that uh, this cause pattern is actually releasing its energy to go higher and you really have to wait till you get a sign of strength and obviously if it's a downtrend you may get a sign of weakness. So don't rush off and start doing count guides um, until you get a sign of strength or a sign of weakness with a test or last point of supply. Okay, so I've pre-drawn these. This is 
obviously looking at the point and figure chart and reading the ticket.com with the settings. Alright. Okay. So here we have a uh, consolidation pattern, a cause pattern, the main one at the bottom down here. I've gone all the way to the right here. Now this is a much larger cause pattern, which is a good sign. We have a base, a sign of strength up here, and our last point of supply. So we draw a projection between um, our last point of supply and, and our original um, last point of demand. Now we'll just go back to that again, I'll just show that again. To, do, to draw the horizontal bar, the horizontal bar of the Wyckoff count guide, you go from the last point of supply, which is this, you know, you get a sign of strength and a dip, and you go all the way back to the um, last point of demand before you get a selling climax. You don't pick some random point in the middle there. You want to see where, you know, what you're trying to do is you're trying to put a horizontal line over the period of accumulation. So you're trying to put a horizontal line over the period where the energy is built up. Now it is true, within a, a cause pattern you can get um, minor uh, little accumulation periods, so you have to choose the most conservative one first. Don't go find the largest sideways pattern and start drawing a, a count guide on it, expecting the stuff to move, you know, like a thousand percent or something. You start with the most conservative pattern you can, that looks um, true to do your count guide. So this, this is what I've used here, but you could have actually you could have actually drawn a, a account guide on a smaller pattern down about there, which is oh, sorry. That was the original one there, but because we've extended, when, it, when you extend in the price action, you go and find the bigger base, so you're allowed to be extend your conservative to the next pattern. So the first uh, account guide would be based around this this pattern here. And as price goes up, you want to find, um, you know, measure the larger energy resource that it goes out to here. Okay. And by the way, to draw the boxes, all you do is select the B key and drop in two points, the red point to the right-hand side, and you get a box. Okay, here we have a, in this particular area, we had two choices to build our horizontal line. What you do is you draw your horizontal line and you select the lowest point um, if you're bullish within the, within the pattern, and pretty much, you know, either, either you can either select, you select the higher one in the middle range, or the highest point of the consolidation. I like to do the lowest and the highest because it gives me a range up here. As, as like any trends that go along, you have a base pattern, and then you have quite common sense wise, you have stepping stones, just like when you're crossing a river. Normally there's a bunch of stones that, are, that are, are not joined together, but you step over them, and a, these are stepping stone counts. You have a base count, a stepping stone count, stepping stone count. And in between you have the markup. And this is very, very healthy. If, if you have a base, and the price moves up with these consolidation periods, it's like a build up of energy. It has more release. And when you do get your projection from this original one here, can you know there's very strong odds as when it breaks out it's not going to go up in a straight line so you're going to you expect these stepping stone counts it's actually more healthy that it has more stepping stones um, because people are uh, adjusting positions and the people who didn't evaluate down here are saying oh we've got some action on apple looks like we've uh, our fundamentals are wrong we've missed out on let's communicate it's accumulate here so therefore it, make, it gives more strength for stock because the people who buy down here may not believe it's going to go up here, they maybe only had a position to go to here. Anyway, we are measuring, like I said before, the uh, coils of energy that can have a possible release. So what I've got here, I've got, um, once again, I've drawn a pattern here, we've got another build up of energy here that gets released, strength, breakdown. As you notice, this pattern is a little bit smaller than that one, and the target is we're getting a congestion of targets. Oops. So the energy is from each uh, cause is targeting a top zone, which is obviously near um, all-time resistance. Now this cause pattern here, I have I've got a strength, but I have not quite 
not yet got a last point of supplying for one that doesn't see the point of picture you can obviously scroll down here you can always see is a straight upward line you don't see any little pullbacks so I'm um, being a bit presumptuous to take advantage of drawing this count guide I, obviously Richard Wyckoff would not draw a count guide at this particular time because he hasn't got a little point of supply because you can wake up in a couple of days or, or a week and you find this has crashed all the way back down so that's why you do not draw the um, the Wyckoff count guide until you get a test but I'm just putting it here for illustration purposes I just want to make that clear um, Obviously on, on a downtrend, you're looking for a sign of weakness and the last point of demand, it's just inverse. So the idea is to examine a base that will have a release of energy that shows a healthy uptrend, a further, further builds up of energies, and then to recognize where um, the energy may be expired and I'm not saying a reversal, I'm saying where the energy sort of runs out and you can expect a consolidation zone up here um, to find out whether it's going to be a another stepping stone to go higher or a distribution pattern where it may go lower. But like as I say, at the current point of time, um, I'm being presumptuous to expect it's going to go beyond this. So we'll have to wait and see. This whole chart you're seeing here with the price chart down below and the point of, and the point of, figure, point of figure chart is the rentaticket.com uh, point of figure chart tool and when you set the dates down here we use dates and price um, you the software does check to make sure you get the date the correct format the only thing is that this date here I've got highlighted here should be between these two dates here now, if you want the um, the projection to draw up well this price will be below that the 97 here will be below the 104 all right so this 104 will be above the 97. Just putting in information down here to work out what goes on. Now these things, now what type, what size of point and figure chart to use? Um, I think Richard Wyckoff used a one by one, but I find those, well, you know, just too much detail. A one by two is good enough. Um, you can go to a one by three, different charts, it might be, you know, a three by four or whatever. Now, this Wyckoff count guide the first thing you should look for when you go to a chart is have they worked in the past for example if you do a calculation of a, a, a count guide here and I project it up to there you get it you do, might do a count guide here sorry now it's projected down there if the count guide has a good reputation within the chart of working to find price projections then you know the Wyckoff principle of the count guide is working just like when you're using an Elliott wave or any other technical tool um, you want to see a where the disciplines of the principles of the Wyckoff count guide have an effect within the chart. I mean, it's bound by the principle. Not all charts are going to this with this um, where you draw these tools. It's going to work. You're going to find you get projections and price will never get there. That's because the energy built up in the cores is not true. So if you find a chart where the count guide does have very good projections within the chart, and it's generally stocks that are moving, you know, your momentum stocks and your popular stocks and your indexes, you're going to find that the count guide becomes a valuable tool. Now, for example, here we've got a massive consolidation here. This particular count guide would have had a, pro, a target down here. But when you do a smaller and a more conservative count go first, this one here actually had a projection down to about here. I haven't drawn it on the chart, so I'm trying to make a, a video of a limited time. So this count guide here, that if you drew one of these projections, that work off count guide, you would have got to here. But the bigger pattern, did not release itself because the energy obviously wasn't all true to go all the way down there. But that doesn't mean you wouldn't wouldn't have drawn a bearish count guide um, originally because what you do, every stepping stone count you get, you're analysing it to see whether you get a, another sign of weakness or a sign of strength. By the way, to remove the boxes, just double click. Here we have base, stepping stone count, evidence of sign of strength. We, you know, quite easy could have got the sign of weakness could have been that. And as you see, the sign of weakness actually failed because it bounced back up pretty strongly here. So, was, you know, it wasn't really a um, last point of the, um, demand. So that pretty much reversed that idea. So you just have to um, understand Wyckoff logic, use the count projection, and um, check the chart to make sure that it 
friendly for projections and has worked in the past. It's a very useful tool and it gives a lot of strength and understanding to why Richard Wyckoff was a great fan of point and figure charts. And on the last point, I'll just show you how the calculation of the projections are um, made. Here I have a chart of the um, S&P 500. And um, here we have our highlighted um, cores. We count the columns um, left to right. So we have, uh, here we have 16 columns. We have a 20 points per box and so a three box reversal in the bottom left hand corner here. So we go 16 columns, three box reversal. So we go 16 times three times 20 equals 960. We get the low point of 1074 here. And you add the forecast, you know, the energy or 960 on top of that, and you get a forecast there. And in this particular chart, point of figure chart of 20 times bar three, we find that the um, this is a Wyckoff friendly count projection guide chart. As you can see, the um, the forecast from the high of 2007 down to the the low and back up. This is actually a stepping stone count here. Another consolidation build up, and this is to the high. So uh, these just to make point, the projections do not say it's going to reverse. It just says this is a where the energy is expected to run out. Now, if you get further stepping stone counts in the middle, the energy can be extended. So at the moment, the current uh, ACM 500, we're saying there's a good chance the energy could be running out, running out around the 2000, which is, uh, which is actually quite has happened in the last couple of weeks. This is um, a little bit old. So that's how you do the count guy. You can have a study of that. That's how the projections are made. The only thing I do different is I, on the um, the chart you saw before you, we take the low and also we take the high of the consolidation to give you a range up at the top at the top here. Thanks for watching.